you join me here at the, the Yorkshire Cricket Centre at Headingley. Uh, I'm here with Simon Guy, Yorkshire CCC wicketkeeper and pro coach ambassador. Uh, we're here working today with a, with a, an under-17s Yorkshire player, up-and-coming lad, Joe Tetley, who's a wicketkeeping specialist. And the next skill is standing back to the seamer. Um, so, Simon, standing back, uh, it's never easy behind the stumps. T talk me through standing back and the, the salient points. Okay. A lot of the simple basics are similar to standing up, so we've got our good hand presentation again. We've got our arms freed up so we can actually go with the ball a little bit easier. Posture, massively important, but might change slightly when we stood back, as in if it's a really high carrying pitch, we might be a fraction higher in our posture. Obviously, if it's keeping really low, then we might be a little bit lower, obviously, to just adapt to the ball and things that's going on within the game. Our movement patterns as well, so we're looking at that good speed of movement, pushing our head towards the ball, massive presentation of our hands as we're going towards it, and obviously the variation of are we going to have to dive, are we going to move our feet, or is the ball coming straight to us? We have a luxury in this country of England where we have balls that actually wobble sometimes. Yeah. So slightly different to abroad, it's a mixture of, we think, a mixture of the balls themselves and the conditions, but we have balls that wobble, so we tend to try and stay on the line as much as possible. So we can have a look to take the ball straight in the middle, very English style, old fashioned, straight down the middle, we can either take it like that, or we can take it slightly on our inside hip like they do in Australia. Not quite as wide as the Australians, but more on the hip line, which allows us to get a nice flow and movement into the ball. And why does it differ from England to Australia? Is it to do with the ball seeming off and after it's passed the batsman? The ball kind of sits itself up and wobbles as it comes towards you, so you can't actually track exactly where the ball's going to end up. So uh, different keeps have different variations. Chris really likes to free his arms, get them right out there and actually meet the ball. Some of the hands your keepers like to let it come and get it under their eyes. So it's just finding what works best for the keeper themselves. But it's, it's one of those ugly things that unfortunately just happens. And the more relaxed you can say, Keep your hands presented really big, give yourself the best chance to take it and stay relaxed. Let the ball come to you, best chance of taking it. The Warwickshire keepers are really keen on taking the ball in front of the body because at age Baston, the ball does wobble and move about a lot. So for me that makes perfect sense. Uh, down at Taunton, a place like that where it carries a bit further, you'll tend to find they'll take it on the hip line because they're a bit deeper. Uh, when I was younger I started down the middle, as I got older I started to capture my hip line because it allowed me to move to the ball better. So a little bit of personal preference within that. So the scope to work with either either, but whichever you do 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 it well catch Joe out a bit here see if we can just spread him a little bit wider see how quick his movement is he's not even had to dive yet so how far could he potentially go fantastic for we kept it nice and simple but really good speed of movement so remember the things we talked about like the posture that good position to start with allows him to get into that really good end position as well Ball's carrying a little bit higher is use that reverse hands as well. So a lot of our young keepers might stick to the normal pattern and try and move a bit higher. But you see a lot now in the one day cricket as well, your keys watch as your prize. Good strong hand position, really letting the ball come in. You see his head was at the side as well, so we can track the ball all the way in. Sometimes we can get a little bit lost behind here, so we lose track of the ball. So yeah, that good strong position, whichever side you prefer. Okay, and that preference of good strong hands, but also eyes watching the ball all the way in. Most keepers are kind of five foot eight and smaller. Is it a benefit to be a small lad as a keeper? I'm glad you said smaller there because I'm only five foot seven. Uh, there's pros and cons. I mean, you look at a lot of the modern keepers now are getting a little bit taller. Uh, when they used to be down south, a lot of the keepers were tall down there because the balls carried nice and high and used to back all day. Uh, I think the modern modern keeping now, yeah, you, you can be a tall keeper. There's nothing wrong with that full stop. There's great assets to that. Longer levers, longer arms, bigger reach. Also now, if you want to play for England, you've got to bat in the top six. So, you know, you've got, I mean, we were always all round us as keepers, but now it's a, a next level. You know, you've got to be the best batter in the world and the best keeper in the world. As a bowler, you can be okay and just survive, or as a batter, you don't need to bowl, but as a keeper, we have to be a pure dual role player. It's as simple as that. I'd like to just talk to you briefly about the psychology of wicket keeping as well. Oh, how long are you going? Well, <laughs> that's partly the question, because it is a long day in the field. How do you keep together how do you keep focused how do you keep that concentration level up uh, repetition you know catching balls catching balls we need a definite switch on switch off there has to be a point at which we really solely focus on the ball of the ball and then obviously tracking the ball itself but then as soon as we've got that there's different ways of then passing the ball and then kind of relaxing obviously discussions with your mates so obviously kind of just clearing your mind lots of different keepers use different things in different ways so those little key points of that turn on or go up gears and down gears, people use it within different ways. So for me it was a case of when I caught the ball, then when I passed it on to Slipper and Lisi, that was my shutdown. And then as soon as he was at the head of his run-up, I kind of switched myself on again, 
but I'd move up that gear so I'd, I'd be ready and then I'd be in my position like Joe was there just stepping in. As soon as I got in that movement, boom, I was tuned in again.